Back on Sports Center with Cindy Brunson. I'm Steve Bunin. We're a good combo. Some of the great combos in sports history. We're not there yet. We're working on it. Magic and Kareem in the NBA. Five championships, eight NBA Finals appearances in ten seasons. Baseball, hard to top Ruth and Gehrig. The Babe, the Iron Man, four World Series together in five World Series appearances. In hockey, also sort of a no-brainer. Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier, they dominated the ice in the 80s, winning four Stanley Cup trophies in a five-year span. Gretzky traded after that 88 title, although they did get together for one more season with the Rangers. And, of course, in football, Montana to Rice, arguably the two best players ever at their respective positions. They won back-to-back -back Super Bowls after the 88 and 89 seasons. And look who joins us here on Sports Center, Joe Montana. Happy to have you here in Bristol, Connecticut. You. You're here on behalf of uh, ESPN's Madden Legends Week, powered by EA Sports Arena. It comes out at, at midnight. So this is the first time I've been watching your interviews that the le Legends, <coughs> if you're playing, a Legend can play against the current team. You, you yeah. got four kids in their 20s. Okay. You think they would pick you and play against the current team, or would they pick a current team and try to play against you and beat you? <laughs> well. My guess is they try to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing my one son, he made, he made a team uh, all of, of just him already. So, <laughs> <laughs> What was your reaction when they approached you and said, hey, we want you to be a part of this? Well, I think, I think it was a great idea. First of all, you know, there's always a, a, a fight for this game and when it comes out, as you said, tonight at midnight. And so Sandy from EA and I have been around here hitting all the shows, yeah. trying to get the word out that it's coming out and talk a little bit about the new things that are going on going on and, and one of them is being able to play as a, as a legend yeah. and it does a couple of things for us older guys you know kind of gives us a a new look at the game and, and gives other people a look at our careers and maybe build another a younger fan base at some point in time before before we cash it in right but uh it's been a lot of fun there's some really new exciting things also along with it um a new engine that drives it and makes it a lot more realistic and mm -hmm. and uh, one of the great things is connect and, and the voice control is pretty sweet when you were college age you're coming out of notre dame take us back to to that first camp with the 49ers you remember the first time you took the field as a pro what was that like well it was, it was a little bit uh intimidating you know i was taken late in the third round yeah. and so i was just happy to be there and you know i'd gotten to an organization that was you know, I knew I thought I had a good opportunity at some point in time. You know how much I didn't know, but I knew that at two and fourteen, there was the, oh, I would have at least some window of having yeah. a chance. And um, it was awe-inspiring because at the time OJ had just had come to the team or had yeah. been there for a year, and you know you had seen him so many times doing his things. And um, but. After a while, you just after the first couple weeks or so, you get used to everybody, and then it's just another training camp. What were your expectations for your NFL career as a third round I pick? I didn't really have any expectations at that point in time. I, you know, I really was. I went there with going to give it every opportunity I could. I had no idea how it would turn out, um, but I knew that it was something I dreamed of as a little kid, and now I had the chance, and I didn't want it to ruin it. Uh, so I wanted to give it every effort that I possibly could. And, and then from there, you just kind of go and see how it goes. So midway through your second season, you became the starter. What, when did it click for you and you felt like, I can do this at the NFL level? Well, it took some time, really, because there were, there were times in the season where, especially the first one, where I, I remember we were playing the Cowboys in Dallas, and, and they were beating the living dog out of Steve <laughs> DeBerg. And Bill was... Bill's on the sideline and he's starting to substitute, right? And so he was like here and I was right behind him. And so when he, he was looking to put people in, so I, he would turn and I would turn. He would turn, <laughs> I would turn. He wasn't catching my eye because uh, was, it was pretty brutal on Steve. But uh, and there, were, there were ups and downs. And, you know, I, I get a first start in, in a preseason game. I remember that I threw two interceptions that were run back for touchdowns. And the guy had the nerve to run me over on the one oh, to get into you. the end zone for the second one. So, um, you know, we... It's like always, it's a struggle in the beginning. You know, you're learning, you're learning a whole new system. You're learning a whole new style of play uh, with a, a whole, you know, a lot of new, new guys, new faces. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment as an NFL player? I think one of the, the biggest things was, was after my back surgery. I had back surgery early in the year in 86, I think it was, 87. Mm -hmm. um, too many hits in the head. <laughs> to remember. And, but I played seven weeks later uh, after the surgery. And so... Uh, 
I mean, that took, I almost was ready to give it up until the doctor said, hey, you know, you'll be fine. It's just a matter of how fast you want to come back and play. And uh, once he said that, and my wife would ridicule me every day, I got lazy and said, I guess you really don't want to play. And, you know, to the point where it helped motivate me and, and got me back as fast as I could. And if you now could go back and give that 23-year-old Joe Montana in his first camp as a Niner a piece of advice about what, what would transpire over the next 20 years, what would you tell young Joe? Well, sometimes what happens with young quarterbacks is like you, they want to go in and make a, a big splash right away and do things that they don't do and, or can't do uh, consistently. And, you know, give it, give it time. Get, let, it, let things happen for you. Go in and try to establish a rhythm. Get complete passes. I don't care where they are. Just get yourself some confidence as a young guy. But I, I was fortunate that Bill kind of brought me along that way. He put me in situations that I could, I should have success in. Not that, I, that you would, because you still got to go out and do it. But he put me in, in pretty good situations. Well, you certainly made the most of it. One of the most successful quarterbacks of all time. Again, uh, the game comes out tonight, midnight Eastern. We appreciate you joining us on SportsCenter. Thank Joe you. Montana. It's my pleasure. Thank Great you very much. Here.